Right, so we carry on to look at um, scenarios where we have a bonus issue. So you can have an organization um, issue do a bonus issue where we have no new capital coming in and we have then straight new capital coming in. The question is, how do we deal with this? Like we said, we know with the bonus issue, we always go to the beginning of the year. I mean, I guess in reality, you can think of it like this. A bonus issue will only right, be given to people who actually exist at the time which means that if the market issue happens afterwards, the market people will only just, these are just the issue of new shares and we're waiting them as we've done in the very first question. They don't get any bonus. Of course, if you have a market issue and then you have a bonus issue, then of course the new people who arrived and the old people will get, if you like, a bonus issue, extra shares as a share of, um, um, as a share of, um, reserves it's an interesting one in reality because if you have new people who have just arrived for a short period of time and you're giving a bonus issue you're giving them reserves that they haven't really worked for so if you can even think of the practicality of it it is unusual to give a bonus issue immediately after a, 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 a new market issue typically a bonus issue would happen before a new market issue to reward um, existing shareholders so bon a market a market issue will typically happen post a bonus issue where the new market issue will not get any benefit of those bonus shares so if question gives a bonus issue and an issue of shares at full pricing let's see what happens again like I say the first thing is to apply the bonus fraction from the start of the year the key point here is to stop at the bonus issue you see the whole idea here is that we want to reward the people who who have existed who are already here we want to give them their own share of the bonus right but once we get to the bonus date we're now recognizing their full shares it, we just and that's the way the the math works it's sort of saying recognize the bonus fraction and then let's weigh them right and then once we get to the bonus date we now fully recognize the full number of shares so it's okay we don't need to we just need to weigh we just need to weigh the shares from now on we don't in terms of weighted average <clears throat> based on timing when it occurred but in terms of the actual bonus that's fine give the people up here their own um share of that bonus really and that's really the the, the point so like i said here because all existing shares prior to the bonus issue have now received the bonus we have to account for them and um, by this date by the date of the bonus issue they are now fully from this or if, if you like from this date onwards they are now fully existing shares and so everything carries on um, after this date until the the next market issue so again what we're doing here is um, time apportioning of course we're doing that to reflect that this is normal we do this weighted average thing anyway time apportioned the number of shares to reflect the cash being received from the market issue so let's see this example here an entity had a million shares in issue on the 1st of January so 1st of January um, x1 an entity had a million shares in issue and so they issued um, 200,000 shares on the 1st of April so you can see first of all that I'm going to have to do some weighted business because you're doing a market share um, three months into the year so you have a um, a market share issue um, on the 1st of April on the 1st of April um, 2001 so um, I'm going to be doing this sort of 1 million times 3 over 12, right? And then when I get here, I'm going to have these additional shares come in of one of 200,000 adding on to my current 1 million and, um, and then carry on. Um, yeah, and then carry on um, just going, if you like. But what's interesting here is that I have a bonus issue. So I also have a bonus issue here from the 1st of August. So the bonus the bonus shares are deemed to happen right from, if you like, the beginning. So the question here is, um, what is the bonus, if you like, on this on these 1 million shares? Well, the bonus, it says 1 for 5. So 1 for 5 means that my bonus fraction is 6 over 5, right? I get 5 and I get an additional 1. So... I started with 1 million shares, you're giving me 6 over 5 times that, and of course I'm going to weight that. And then I get to my 1.2 million um, 
market shares i mean because i now have right this is market i issued another two hundred thousand. so they will start and they will get their if you like their bonus um issue as well if you like it i mean I, it's just the same thing i'm literally just carrying on but just wait waiting it and i do this if you like up to the date of the actual bonus issue right and the date of the bonus issue is the first of august so that's um april may june july so i have four months four months of this of this um in terms of the time right so i now have a scenario where the question here is well what is the um what is the bonus issue i have 1.2 million shares which i've given if you like times six over five if you like so now these shares are full shares by this date so 1.2 times six over five right i'm just getting my calculator 1.2 times 6 divided by 5 and here i have 1.44 so i have 1.44 million shares full shares as at the first of april living like normal shares that's the case now all right that's what happened i've bonused everything up before that so now i have this so from here on i just treat it from a weighted point of view i don't do any more bonus issuing like i don't need to multiply anything by six over five it's all in here now everything is here these guys i had to do by six over five because i need to top them up i've topped up done the top up bonuses here by doing this done the top up bonuses now here and now i have them here it's just a tabular way of looking at it so I have 1.44 million shares, and I now multiply this by the weighted average, of course, um, up till, well, I have August, September. Um, I have here August, September. So um, times two, um, times two over 12 here. That's what I have here. I have 1.44 times 2 over 12 because I have another market issue on the 1st of October. So I have that for the two months, if you like, till I get to October. Then it says you issue another 300,000. So I now have, at the 1st of October, I now have add another 300,000 to this. So I now have, these are now full shares of, of 1.74, right? I added 300, 0.3 in effect, right? 300,000 to 1.44. I have 1.74 at the 1st of October. So I have October, November, December. So I now have this weighted again for three months. And this is how I actually get my weighted average number of, of shares, if you like. Um, so let's see, I've written it out here clearly. Oh, I actually had a clean page here that I could have done it on. So from the 1st of January, I have a million shares. They get the bonus issue time apportion as usual from the 1st of april we have a new market issue of 200 they also get the bonus issue because this bonus issue happened in august and i i highlight here that we're recognizing this bonus element on the right side when i say the right side over here it's in here but by the time i get to here it's okay i can now recognize all the full shares from here right but up to here i'm recognizing that bonus element in here plus the time apportioning right because that's that times six over five times the portioning and once i've done all of that everything reverts to here and now i just carry on as normal recognize this for the full issue of 1.44 for two two months and then recognize that for three for three months so by the first of all we can recognize the bonus issue as shares but just keep weight apportioning and carry on as as normal of course these new shares at the first of august do not enjoy any bonus issue of course not because they um they happened after the bonus that the market issue happened after the bonus so here is my new weighted sort of um, um value of eps and therefore my um, earnings per share i had profits of 200 profits after tax of 200 earnings of 220,000. that's my weighted um, figure of 1.455 and therefore i have a earnings per share of 15.1 so i guess like all things it is a matter of practice but the key issue here is this i'm doing using my bonus fraction up to the date of the bonus issue stop at the bonus issue date stop stop and then just treat the full shares that you have just wait them from then on you might have a new market issue you might not but just stop at the bonus date and you're fine right and i'm sure you'll see what's going on okay great stuff that's the end of that video and we will look at the next topic of rights issues which are really a hybrid or a combination of 
bonus shares and um, full shares and we'll talk about that in the next in the next video